like a crafty, cold-blooded animal. My cunning body snaked onto a land where the waters of love that covered its face became hostile to the flames of my skin. But my seductive tongue spewed words of deceit and deceitfully I held the world captive. Like a seed that was planted into the grounds of your flesh and carefully I watched on and I enjoyed how your carelessness nurtured me to grow into trees. In threes I became formed. The last of the eye, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. Alas, my evil deserve corrupt in this fertile land of love, it started yielding the rotten fruit of death. Slowly, a love land became infested with my phenomenon C, just like a simultaneous equation. I wanted to change the definition of love. I wanted love to be replaced with my four letter word, a reckless substitution strategically carved for the elimination of your souls, I I'm lost. lost. Yes, some of you might have heard about me. Some of you might have touched me, tasted me and caressed me even when you barely know who I really am. You laid me on your bed of curiosity and your burning fleshly desire slept with me. You planted a seed in my womb not to harvest but to have us in intimacy and I conceived. A soulful pregnancy that led to the birth of my children, infidelity, adultery, incest, rape, masturbation, fornication, and it amuses me the way a lot of Christians strongly believe that terrorist groups are the best in abducting people, holding them hostage, ending innocent lives, when in contrary, I am silently killing a lot of Christians, ensnaring you in the bondage of sin, enslaving you in the web of lust and enclosed cage, fenced with invisible filaments filled with sticky nectarous pollen, so when you touch, it becomes difficult to take off and you become stuck to it and in it I control you and I watch you die slowly for it is not my desire to see you enter into that glorious kingdom so I'd rather make you immoral than to see you becoming immortal and you wouldn't even realize that the difference between them is just a single tea a single touch just a single touch of me and I'll ignite your fleshly desires like a flickering flame burn off your fruitless seed of self-control and empty you of holiness just for you to fulfill your hunger for me like a sick patient whose lungs last after oxygen but won't last long yet to still inhale me as if I can heal you when I can only heal you to see beyond the boundaries of your vision and fill your mind with lustful scenes and it's amazing Seeing how your desire to please yourself has made you like God. With ease you form men naked in your thoughts, a proof of how everlasting you are. And this assures me that I am winning. Ye men keep falling for me just like your father Adam. Because I keep deceiving you with this forbidden fruit. No wonder you always fall by what you see. For if I could attract Eve into sin, then I guess I'm so attractive and irresistible. Like a beautiful worm, I sneak into your bodies hijack your mind, crawl through your safe pathways and come out just to see men numbering their sins such that in a frequency ye men tally mentally. And it's so shameful how ye men are scared to welcome the Holy Spirit into their bodies to move. Yet these same bodies of men welcome my last full sex thoughts with a standing ovation. Now here I am. One of the most powerful things that is holding a lot of people in bondage. Each and every day I keep infecting and capturing many souls like arrested slaves in an epidemic cage suffering from a contagious disease which spreads like tuberculosis among ye only to get ye chained in handcuffs. Where my bullets of temptations have shot you, so you won't belong to his kingdom. Now look at yourself. Your guilt is killing you softly. Sin consciousness is depriving you of the very reason why Christ came to die for you. The love he showed you by descending from his glorious throne to be crucified on the cross for you that love. The greatest love he demonstrated by laying down his life and even though sin might place you far from him, his love will still reach you. I said his love will still reach you because nothing can separate you from the love of God for he Christ your Savior has fulfilled for you the demands of those unpardonable laws and has brought you grace grace that accepts you for the countless number of times you come back to him for forgiveness of sins grace that speaks of love even when you disappoint him in your sins or will you continue to sin that grace may abound see the best thing to do is to flee from me and walk in the spirit but I wonder if that is even possible for you to do because for decades you keep hearing and reading about this yet you still fall for me see I pity you so let me help you I think it's best you know your weaknesses. 
accept your wrongs and ask for strength from God. Refrain from the things that make you fall. Stay away from too much idleness. Don't let your emotions control you. Seek help because you can't win this war on your own. But you, instead of you to depart from me, you rather form a deeper relationship with me, fortify your strength, which can only be felt at the extreme borders of my name, last. And even if I take off those extreme borders, it will still be left with us. We will be left alone in a war. In a struggle and before you could escape, I would have made you a scapegoat and would have feasted on you and later watch your helpless, desperate soul return to me to drink of me. Forgetting that whosoever drinks of this water shall test again. See, I cannot satisfy you, but I'll continue to feed you. I'll be your good Samaritan and continue to make sweet juice out of you to quench my test for war. For it's only the truth that can set you free. And if Jesus is the truth, then seek the truth. Yearn for the truth. Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. But I will still be around. For he may be your first love. But I will forever be last. last.